Hello, everyone. My name is Alejandro. I go by the Alelo on the internet, and I'm working for 47 Degrees. Uh, I actually started writing Scala a few months ago, and I come for this unholy uh, untyped languages that, <laughs> uh, like Python, JavaScript, Clojure, I've, I've done a lot of those, and now I'm, I'm doing uh, Scala. So uh, the problem that I want to solve with Fetch is that uh, many of uh, our application are reading and manipulating that data from a variety of different sources. For example, in Scala exercises, for rendering a page, uh, a section, or some exercises, we need to query a database, we need to ask GitHub for the contributions to this section, and we, we also need to query the file system for, because we, we compile the exercises and we need to uh, get some information for, from the file system. We use free monads uh, in Scala exercises backend code, so it's a problem with free monads. Uh, there is a problem that you do everything sequentially. So we first fetch something from the database, then we query GitHub, then go to the file system, and so on. And this is uh, less than than ideal. So can we make reading data both simple and efficient? Uh, there are a series of optimizations that we can make when we're reading data from this uh, variety of sources. For example, batching. If we need more than one user, for example, we can just issue one select query to the database and ask for the two users in one batch. If we have two independent pieces of data, for example, the GitHub contributions to an exercise and uh, a data from, from a user, we can request these two data pieces independently uh, in the same time. And uh, if we are doing um, manipulation with the same data in, uh, for different pl uh, places of, of our page, for example, we could cache results that we have already fetched, so we don't need to refetch results more than once. But mixing these optimizations uh, with the code that reads uh, data, uh, Maybe we are trading here clarity for per performance and mixing some concerns, some high-level concerns, reading the data and manipulating it with the low-level concerns, uh, like making this uh, efficient. So ideally, what we want is to read data from multiple sources um, efficiently without using any explicit concurrency construct without uh, having to uh, explicitly batch requests and uh, use a cache, just using applicative uh, for concurrency, for independent uh, f uh, data fetches, and monad for sequencing fetches that depend on each other. And we also want to have a high degree of modularity, so we want to program like, like if the data was in memory. What we are not solving, we are not solving uh, loading data lazily, uh, we want to run this uh, one of uh, eager fetches, so we need some data, we fetch everything, put it in memory, do something with it, like render an HTML document, and that's it. We are not uh, loading anything lazily or uh, streaming. Your data must fit uh, in memory. So are you familiar with this, this paper by Simon Marlowe and a few others at Facebook? There is no fork. Uh, Okay, this is a this is a original paper I, I base my my work on, and it, it describes a library uh, that they wrote uh, at Facebook called Haxel that implement this in Haskell. But we want this in Scala. There are already a few options available. So there is a Stitch by Twitter, which is not open source, uh, unfortunately. It's, it has certain issues, like it's coupled to their RPC infrastructure. It's not just for reading data, but they also perform side effects, uh, like writing or, or calling some RPC calls that are um, not, not reads. Uh, we borrow some of its high-level API, because I think it's very, very well designed. There's also Clamp by SoundCloud. It seems like the more this, this one is open source, but you have to use it with Twitter or Scala's futures. And I wanted to, I mean, I wanted to users of the Fetch library to be able to, to choose their own concurrency uh, abstraction, like task, future, or Monix task, Scala set task, whatever they, they are using already in their applications. There are also a few, a couple others, Resolvable and Java, and I haven't looked into them. One of them is just a blog post, but I haven't looked be, uh, very deeply into them. 
and I, I may f borrow some ideas from them in the future for, for Fetch. So uh, Fetch is a work in progress. Uh, I have yet to release uh, a first uh, version, but it's a work in progress implementation of Haxel in Scala. It's uh, purely functional. It's based on the CATS free monad, and it's just a free monad and interpreter. And uh, it lets users choose the concurrency uh, monad that, uh, that they want. Scala or Twitter future, task, ID, eval, you name it. So I'm going to show some examples of, the, uh, of what, what Fetch can, can give you. And I want to use this example of rendering some part of a, some page of a blog post. So we have uh, users uh, in our model, users and posts, and meta, uh, post metadata, like the, uh, just the topic of the post. <coughs> And we have these few primitives for getting a user, getting an author of a post, getting a post, getting the post metadata, and fetching the, the latest post. I will show how to implement this uh, later. For now, we, we are just going to see what fetch can give you. So we can now declare and declare a fetch. Declaring a fetch doesn't actually do anything. It just builds this tree of uh, data dependencies, uh, this uh, free, free monad fetch. So once we have a fetch, we can interpret it, we can run it to a target concurrency monad. In this case, I'm using future, but you get to choose what you, what you interpret a fetch to. You could use task or other things. So here, I create a fetch uh, for getting a post, the post with ID 1. And when I run it, here I, I display some, some, some arrows uh, for showing the fetches that we are uh, uh, performing. So what I do is fetch a list of posts with the ID one, just, just uh, the, a post with the ID one, and uh, I get the result back. So, sorry. So next is sequencing. If we, use, if we declare a, a, a fetch and we use flat map, we are saying that the, the binding that takes the get post to is dependent on this. It's not actually, they don't actually depend on each other, but I, I don't have, uh, sorry. I don't have a, a way of knowing if they, if they do depend or not. So when we run this, it will first uh, fetch the post with ID one, and then when it finishes doing that, it will go, go ahead and, and fetch the post with ID two. However, if we have two, two pieces of data that we know are independent, we can use Fetch's join operator to tell Fetch, OK, these two uh, di uh, data de uh, dependencies are uh, independent. So you can perform them at the same time. Since they are of the same type, we are fetching a post with ID 1 and a post with ID 2, we can actually batch this, uh, this request and run it um, and request these two posts at the same time. Apart from, from batching, uh, if we are joining multiple independent requests to, to the same, actually the same data, like here, we are joining two requests for getting the same, same data, we don't want to fetch it um, multiple times. So when, when we perform the fetch, this all will be deduplicated. So you don't have to worry about it. Another thing that fetch gives you is that when you, when you declare a fetch and you use a piece of data, and then after that, after requesting this piece of data, you need uh, the same data, this will actually, fetch will actually catch it in memory, so you don't have to pay the, the cost of uh, two round trips for fetching something that you already have. So here we, we uh, get the post with ID one, and after that, we are asking for the same post. So here, it, this will execute in just one round and get the post. It will see that the next request is for something that it already has in memory, and it won't perform any more, any more requests. If we join fetches uh, from two, in the, two different data sources, uh, we cannot batch them because we are uh, asking for different data. But we can do is to, what we can do is evaluate them at the same time so since we are interpreting this to future here, it actually 
uh, starts uh, to th uh, run, they run in different threads. In one thread, I'm fetching uh, a po the post with ID 1, and in another, the post with ID 2. And when they both came, come back, we can, uh, this fetch is uh, finished. So I have here an example, putting it all together. Imagine that we have uh, in, in a page uh, of our blog, we, have, uh, we are showing a list of, uh, we are taking la the latest uh, 10 posts and grouping, their, grouping them by topics. So we want to know for one, one topic, like monads or applicatives or functional programming, how many posts uh, we have written. So for that, we need to fetch uh, a list of the latest posts. We also have to fetch the metadata because the topic is uh, part of the metadata of the post and we are using another data source just for the, for the examples. And after that, uh, we can calculate our, our map. So people are talking about monads and applicatives mostly. Um, another part of the page could be uh, a list of the latest articles and we order by the author's name, for example. For that, we will need to fetch all the posts. We will need to, uh, for every post, we will need to fetch the author and then order the, the posts mm, according to the name of, of the author. Here, as you can see, I do a round for fetching all of the posts. And then when, when I have all the posts uh, in memory, I can go ahead and fetch the, the authors of the posts. For this example, I made that every post had a, um, an author with ID one, two, or three. So we are just asking for these three users. They are the duplicated. So if we put these two things together, if we say, okay, I'm going to render the home page. Uh, I need uh, the, the data of the topics of the articles, and then the posts ordered by author. So if we join this uh, together with this operator and tell him fetch that they are independent, okay. Uh, we will first uh, fetch the list of, uh, of posts, which the both fetches need. And after that, as you can see here, uh, we will fetch all the post metadata, only the, the topics uh, fetch needs this uh, information, and all the post authors at the same time uh, in two different threads, because this are independent, so we can make this request together. Um, well, I can explain a bit more how you can tell fetch to uh, how how to tell fetch to uh, fetch data from a concrete source, but I will just mention that it's a type class called uh, data source, and it's parameterized by the identity. In our cases, for the user data source, the identity will be a user ID. A result in our user data source, it will be the user um, algebraic data type and a target monad. We are using future here. So you implement this and you can lift your, you implement uh, this uh, and you can lift your, your identities to fetch. And fetch will be able to, to give you a, a fetch to, to the result. There is uh, still some things that I want to, to do. I'm working uh, on a first release. I want to have a documentation site and both a, an Scala doc reference. I, there are some features that I would like to, to add, like uh, syntax for fetches, uh, a way to pass a state into the data sources. Like, for example, if your data sources, data sources are talking to a database, you probably want to inject some kind of connection pool, or if you, they are making HTTP requests, some HTTP client that you have already instantiated or whatever. Uh, right now, uh, fetch is fail fast, so if I don't find an identity, I just uh, 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 interrupt the fetch, but I want to be more flexible on that regard. So for example, you can have your custom error types or accumulate errors. I would like to, to see a for uh, comprehension um, syntax maybe implemented with a macro that if, if you don't have dependencies between bindings, actually evaluates all, all it can in, at the same time. That will, be, that will be awesome. Not only useful for fetch, but for many other libraries. 
for instance, for using for comprehensions with features. Uh, and what I would really like to, to have is some kind of hybrid free applicative and monad structure so I can, we can implement this more easily and take advantage of uh, applica applicative when using free monad too. There's an ongoing discussion on a CATS issue about that, so join if you want. So I don't know if I have time for questions, but I will be around, I'm happy to, to answer them. Are there any questions? So in the type class for data source, uh, there were three parameters. There was sort of the identity for looking things up, the sort of result type for the data, but then there was a third, which was the, what was the type of future, the monad you wanted to return the result in. Does that sort of mean that uh, if I'm defining a data source that I actually have to sort of iterate, go list all the different potential ones that I, that I would support? So I'd say, well, here's the Scala futures and here's eval and everything. Um, uh, I guess the question I was sort of thinking of was like, I wonder if there would be a way to sort of, what, you know, if I come to the table with a new type of future, for example, I would have to then track down all the people who define data sources and get them to add my future. I wonder if there's some way that we could potentially allow someone to sort of go the other direction and say, here's a new future that you can talk about in terms of maybe an existing one or, or something else like that. I don't know. Is that something that you've thought about at all? Um, no, and I'm not sure how I will do this. As um, I, I would love to hear suge suggestions from you because uh, this is something that um, I don't know how to do immediately. Uh, but it's an interesting question. We discussed that if you keep your data sources within a trade that is like parameterized by something that provides an instance of monad error, we could uh, automatically just provide an instance of whatever and then have multiple data sources automatically implemented just by the parameterization of the trade to monad error. Any more questions? Well, in that case, thanks. Thank you.